Hey everyone, in this video we'll be discussing this problem from Check Your Understanding, Pathfinder Kinematics. So it's a very interesting problem and let's read the problem statement. House H of an angler is at a distance D from the bank OA, so it's at a distance D, and at a distance L from the corner O. The angler can walk on the ground with a constant speed V and he can swim in the bay with a constant speed U relative to what? One day he decides at his house to fish somewhere on the bank OV. Find the minimum time in which he can reach the desired fishing spot. So basically his objective is to reach anywhere on this line OB. Uh, but a condition is that he needs to reach it the fastest. He needs to take as minimum time as possible. So first of all, uh, let's just discuss a general concept about trajectories taking minimum time. So if So let's say if I ask you, what is the minimum time taken by a body to reach from point A to B? If let's say his speed is constant, you guys would say it's just along the straight line joining them, right? Now let's say I draw a line here and tell you guys that the speed with which the boy travels in this media is U and the speed with which the boy travels in this media is V. Now, and I've also given you that U is greater than V. So which means uh, he's faster in this media as compared to this media. So now you guys should tell me, okay, so then what, what we can think about is that we'll try covering more distance in this media because as we know, the speed is greater and then we'll cover less distance in this media, right? It makes more sense that doing this will reduce the time taken. Okay, so now let's just forget about this line and let's just derive the exact condition in which this happens. So let's say this angle with the normal is alpha and this angle is beta. Now, obviously, and let's say the distance between L A and B is going to be L. And let's say this distance is, let's say X. And this distance in that case is going to be L minus X. So this angle will be alpha. This angle will be beta. Okay. And obviously these distances are also given. So let's say this is D1 and let's say this is D2. Okay. So now if we had to minim so now we have to minimize the time. So let's say this point is O. So the time will be the time taken will be AO divided by U plus OB divided by V. So what is the distance AO? So as you can see, AO will be equal to square root of X square plus D1 square. And what will OB be? OB will be equal to uh, under root of D2 square plus L minus X, the whole square divided by V. So now as we have to minimize the time taken, we'll just, and we have time as a function of X. So what we'll do is we'll just differentiate time with respect to X and equate it to zero. If we do that, what we'll get is X upon U square root X square plus D1 square L minus X divided by square root D2 square plus L minus X, the whole square times V. So, if, so after differentiation, what you'll observe is that this term X upon square root of X square plus D1 square is simply sine alpha. So this is going to be sine alpha upon U. This term is going to be sine beta. So sine beta upon V comes out to be equal to zero. So this is a very important result. So sine alpha upon U equal to sine beta upon V. If our goal is to minimize the time the ratio of the sines of these angles must be equal to the ratio of the velocities. Okay, so then this relation must be satisfied. Keeping that in mind, now let's just move on to our problem. All right, so this is the diagram of our problem. Now, uh, the, the man walks with a velocity of V uh, on the ground and he swims relative to water with a speed U. So, uh, and it's given that, the, that V is greater than U. So obviously the worst thing that this guy can do is like do something like this, right? because then he's just maximizing the distance he swims in the river. That is clearly uh, going to take a lot of time. Now, so definitely he's gonna go some, he's gonna do something like this, right? In our derivation, we had a constraint that we had to reach point B. We had a destination point that is B. Here we don't really have it. Here our destination point is not a point, but this whole line OB. Okay, so now let's say the angler travels something like this and he reaches this point, okay? And let's say this angle is some alpha. Now, if I ask you guys, what does he have to do in order to reach the line OB in the least possible time? Well, then you will tell me, well, he should travel in such a way that he reaches the other end normally, right? Because that's the shortest possible path. So it will be 
the shortest possible time taken in this media, right? So that's what we'll be doing. So in the if this is the condition, then the shortest possible path after this is going to be this normal line to OB, right? Because our goal is to reach uh, the opposite line in the shortest time, right? Not some point in the shortest time. And that's the slight twist in our problem. So, and hence this is the shortest possible path. So hence this will be the uh, region where it takes the shortest time. All right, so now like solving this problem. So the beautiful thing about this condition is that as this is 90 degree, this angle is going to be theta as well. Okay, so if this angle is alpha, then this angle will be alpha as well. So we have to find the time, right? So for finding the time, let's say this point is C. So in our, so the time T will be HC divided by V plus C, let's say this point is X. So X divided by U. So what will be the distance hc? It's going to be d divided by, oh yeah, and before that, let's, uh, now using the result that we just derived earlier, we can say sine alpha upon v must be equal to sine theta upon u. So from here, we'll get the value of sine alpha to be v by u cos theta. So if we come, if we draw a triangle, and let's say this angle is alpha, so this is going to be, oh, so sine theta, this will be sine theta and this will be u and this side is going to be square root of u square minus v square sine square theta. Now what we're going to do is uh, find the time. So the time will be hc divided by v plus cx divided by u. So what is hc? hc is going to be d divided by cos alpha. If you look at this triangle, from this triangle you can get the value of hc to be d upon cos alpha. And cos alpha, let's just eliminate. Uh, and cos alpha from this triangle, we can write it to be square root of u square minus v square sine square theta divided by u. And this whole thing divided by v. Now, what is cx? C, uh, in order to find cx, so if you have to find cx, uh, what we can do is from, from the length ao, let's subtract, from the length ao, let's subtract ac and the sine theta component of it. Uh, we found out AO. Uh, this length AO, which we can find from this triangle OAH, we'll subtract the value of AC, and then we'll get the value of CO, and the sine theta component of it is CX. Now, what is AO? AO is going to be square root of L squared plus D squared. And what is AC? AC is going to be uh, D tan alpha, right? From the triangle ACH, AC is going to be D tan alpha and tan alpha from this triangle again we can write V sine theta upon uh, square root U square minus V square sine square theta and this whole thing multiplied by sine theta and this is the value of CX. Now if I substitute that over here, so we'll get the value of time to be UD upon V square root U square minus V square sine square theta. Okay. Now, if we group the terms together, if we group the like terms together, so we can separate out this term divided by u and and this will be the answer for our. So that was it for this problem, guys. Uh, if you have any doubts, you can comment down below and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.